lesson is going to be looking at how to multiply decimals together. But before we are actually going to do the multiplying, I want to look at what it actually means to multiply decimals together. In our adding and subtracting lessons, we didn't really talk too much about what it actually means to add and subtract decimals together because it's a lot like working with money. We're adding the numbers together, we're subtracting them, just like when you're working with money. But multiplying decimals doesn't work that same way. We can't think of the money idea with multiplying. So we're going to think about multiplying decimals like we would for area. Because when we find an area, we're going to be multiplying two numbers together, the length and the width, or the base and the height if we're working with the rectangle. So for this problem, 1 and 3 tenths times 1 and 2 tenths, we can think about that as a rectangle with one side having a length of 1 and 3 tenths and one side having a length of 1 and 2 tenths. And to find the area, we would multiply those two numbers together. And so now to actually figure out how we get our answer or why our answer makes sense the way that it does, we're going to use base 10 blocks to figure out the answer to look at what that actually means. So before we can actually solve this problem with base 10 blocks, we're going to just look at the base 10 blocks and what they mean and what each of the pieces stand for. So these are the three blocks that we're going to use, the three pieces. And the unit cube, in this case, is going to be our hundredth cube piece. And 10 of those hundredths will make up our tenth piece, which makes sense. We have 10, 10, 10 hundredths, 10 pieces make up a tenth. And then our one piece, our whole number in this case, is going to be the flat. And this makes sense as well if we're thinking of money. There's a hundred of these, a hundred of our hundredth pieces in there, which is like a dollar. Just like we would think of this as pennies, dimes, and here's our dollar bill. Hundred pennies make up a dollar. So those are the three pieces that we're going to use. And so we're just going to look at a couple problems really quick to make sure we know what all those pieces stand for and how to use them. So in this case, these, these 10 blocks, these pieces, are representing a number. Remember, the flats represent our whole number. So this would be like we have 2. And then everything after that is going to be the number after the decimal. This would be like our tenths. And these will be like our hundredth. So we have four tenths. So that's someone write down. Four tenths. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths. So this number that these base ten blocks are representing is two and forty-six hundredths. Now we can look at this the other way as well. We can be given a number and we can change it into base ten blocks. And that's what this one is. I have the number three and eighteen hundredths. And I want to change it into a, the base 10 blocks, or what that would look like. So that would be three flats. So there's one, two, three. And then I have one tenth piece. So that'll be our uh, rod here, or our long. And then we have eight of the hundredth pieces. So there's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Not perfect, but we get the idea. So that this, these would be the base ten block pieces that we've used to represent three and eighteen hundred. So now let's get back to the problem that we're looking at. Uh, one and three tenths times one and two tenths. We're going to take our base ten pieces and just represent that length and that width using our base ten pieces. So going across here horizontally, we have the number one and three tenths represented. This would be one, that's using our flat piece, and then we have three tenths. That's the length going across. Going down vert vertically, we have the number one and two tenths. Here would be our one, there's our flat again, and we have two of our tenth pieces. Now, if you remember, we said we we're talking about area and how to find area, and it's of a rectangle, so you can kind of see right now that we're missing part of our rectangle. And once we fill in those pieces, that will help us give us our answer for the area, because area is going to be how many of these little cubes fit inside of this rectangle. So to finish off this rectangle, we're going to add in some of our base 10 pieces. And the only base 10 pieces that will fit right here are our hundredths, or those little cubes. So I'm going to fill it in with those pieces. Now, if we were actually using these pieces and having them sitting in front of us, we would have all these pieces squished right next to each other. So it wouldn't like there's, look like there's big gaps. But for doing it right here on the computer, it's easier to have spaces, I think, because it's easier for you to see each piece. But if we smushed all together, this would be our rectangle, no open gaps. And now, to find our 
area, our area is just, okay, so what pieces do you all have in there? And we can see that we have one of our one pieces, and then we're going to put a decimal point, and we have one, two, three, four, five of our tenths pieces, and two, four, six of our hundredths pieces. So one and three tenths times one and two tenths equals one and fifty-six hundredths. You may notice that our answer has more numbers to the right of the decimal than each of our numbers in the pound did, which makes sense because we had to add in some hundreds pieces to make our rectangle an actual rectangle. Let's try another one, see if we can start to notice a pattern with the numbers that we start with and the number that we end with, and looking really specifically at the numbers to the right of the decimal. So here's this problem. We have two and one tenth times two and four tenths. So going across again, we have two and one tenth. And going down vertically, we have two and four tenths. So now, just like the last problem, this is a rectangle, but we can see that pieces are missing to make it an actual rectangle. So let's fill in those pieces so that we can figure out what the actual area is. So here I can see that a flat piece will fit in there. And right here I can see that we're missing a long. And then going down this way, I can see that we're missing a long here and here. And here, and here, and then we still have just a little bit of a gap. We have four spaces left, so it won't be enough for a rod or a lung, but we can get some of our hundredth pieces in there. So there's one, two, three, four. And again, like I said before, if you were actually doing this, modeling it right in front of you, these pieces would be smushed together so you wouldn't see those gaps. But this is what it looks like. So now our area, or our answer is, what is the area of this this rectangle on what pieces do we have inside of here. Before I put my answer down over here for this one, I'm going to write it out to the side and you'll see why in just a moment. Here I have one, two, three, four of our whole pieces, four of our ones. So I'm just going to draw that out. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of our tenths. And then we have one, two, three, four of our hundredths. So now to write this number out, I have four tenths, or four one, ten hundredths, ten tenths, and four hundredths. But this number isn't really what we have here, because we can't have ten tenths. We know that if we have ten of these rods, ten of these rods will fit on one of these flats. So we really don't have four flats. We could change all of these rods right here into one more flat. So we really have five of these flats, none of these, because we changed that into a flat, and we still have four of our hundred pieces. So our answer is really five, and zero, and now four, so five and four hundred. This right here kind of represents where we have to carry a one or carry a two when we're doing multiplying. So now if we look at our answer, do we notice anything again with the numbers that are to the right of the decimal? When we started, we only had a number in the tenth place in both of our answers, or both of our problem numbers. And in our answer, we had two numbers to the right. And again, it makes sense that we have to have more digits to the right because we had to add hundred pieces, which we didn't have to start with. You may also notice that there is two numbers to the right of the decimal in the problem, and I have two numbers to the right of the decimal in my answer. That is very important for when we're multiplying decimals. Let's try one more just to make sure we have this idea down of what it is that we're actually doing when we're multiplying decimals. So in this case, we have three and one tenth times one and three tenths. And so again, I have models here in front of us. We have three and one tenth going across the top, and then we have one and three tenths going along the side vertically. So we're going to fill in all those spaces again. So here we can fit in a long. Here we can get one in. Here we can get one in. We can do the same right over here and get three more in. One more. And I can't fit a whole long one right here because there's only three spots left, so that one's see where my hundred pieces are going to be lying. There's one, two, and three. And again, like the last time, I'm going to write up over here to the side what I have before I write down my final answer. So I can see that I have three of our flats three whole numbers. We have three, six, nine, ten of our lungs. Again, you can see that we're going to have to do some regrouping. 
we're still carrying over. And then we have three of our hundreds of pieces. Just like the last time, if I have 10 of these long, I can change that into a flat. So this is really zero. And I really have four of these flats. So my final answer is four and three hundredths. And so again, we can look for some sort of pattern between what we started with and what we end with. And we can see that we have two numbers to the right of the decimal in our problem. And we have two numbers to the right of our decimal in our answer. And again, that makes sense because we had to add hundreds pieces. So we should have a number in the hundreds place when we finish. And so this is what we're actually doing when we're multiplying decimals together. We are just going to multiply it like a regular multiplying problem, and then we'll look at our decimals at the end. Unlike adding and subtracting, in this case, we do not want to line up the decimal. Sometimes it may work out that way, sometimes it won't, but it doesn't matter. We don't want to worry about that. What we need to make sure of is that both numbers are lined up at the far right side. So we, the very last digit should be lined up. We can have them go out as far as we want to the left. They don't have to line up. The decimal points don't have to line up. The very end of those numbers need to be lined up. Now, we can pretend those decimal points are not even there. If we want to be, we don't even have to write them in there. I just like to because then I know that I'm using the right numbers. And we're going to just treat it like a regular multiplication problem. So here we have 2 times 6 is 12. Uh, if you notice there, we had to carry a 1. That would be like where we did some switching over from our rods or our longs to our flats. Then we have 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 more is 13. Again, I'm not worrying about my decimal points yet. We'll get to that at the end. And moving on to the tenths here, or our ones in this case. Now we have 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Add that up, and we have a 2, 5, and 3. Now is when I want to actually look at my decimal point. Here I had one, two numbers to the right of the decimal. So in my answer, I need to have two numbers to the right of my decimal. So to do that, start at the far right of the number, count over two digits, and then put your decimal point in there. And that would be my answer. So multiplying decimals, big thing is line your decimals up, or line your numbers up. So the numbers on the far right are lined up. Treat it like a regular old multiplication problem. And then add our decimal point in so that the total number of digits to the right of the decimal in the problem, in this case 2, equals the number of digits to the right of the decimal in our answer, which in this case, again, is 2. Let's try one more just to make sure we got it. And this time we're going to try this one right over here. So we have 5 and 26 hundredths times 2 tenths. Again, remember I said the decimal points do not need to be lined up. We need to make sure that the far right of each of these numbers are lined up. So in this case, the 2 is going to go right there. And I'm not going to add in any of those extra zeros because we know when we're tensing by 0, it's just going to give us 0. It's going to take us longer. We don't have to do that part. So now we're going to ignore the decimal. Just treat this like a regular old division problem. So we have 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. And we have 5 times 2 is 10. And our very last step, in this case, we have 1, 2, 3 numbers to the right of the decimal in our problem. So that means we need to have 3 numbers to the right of our decimal in our answer. So starting here on the far right, count over 1, 2, 3. And my decimal point will go right there. And that will be my answer. One thing that I want to point out really quickly, and I'm not going to do a whole problem for that, is if I had an answer of 413, and then I need to add my decimal points in, and I had, like in this case, one, two, three, four numbers to the right of my decimal, I don't even have four numbers, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the far right, count over one, two, three, four spaces, put our decimal point in, and we're going to add zeros in until we reach that decimal. So we're not adding decimals to the, or not adding zeros to the end of our number. We're actually going to add it between our decimal points and those digits that we had. So again, here would be another example. If I had 26, and like in this case, I needed three numbers to the right of the decimal. I'd start at the far right, count over three spots, put our decimal points, add in any zeros to fill in those blank spots. So this would be 26,000. 
So that's just something important to remember. We're not adding zeros onto the end. We need to add it between the decimal points and the digits if that is something that we need to do. Doesn't always happen. You can see in this case in the last time we didn't have to do that, but sometimes that might happen. So just remember when you're multiplying decimals, line up the digits so that the numbers on the far right are lined up. Don't worry about lining up the decimals. Treat it like a regular old multiplying problem. And then your very last step is to count up how many digits are to the right of the decimal in your problem, in this case three, and that should match up with how many digits are to the right of your of the decimal in your answer, which again is 